If you were around when the Sega Model 2 showed up in the arcade, you were treated to one of the largest graphical jumps this hobby has ever seen. Alongside Namco's efforts, we went from simple two-dimensional sprite scaling and rudimentary flat-shaded polygons to fully textured mapped visuals that had a slew of effects applied to them. Texture filtering, anti-aliasing, trilinear filtering, and transparencies would turn those visuals into the absolute cream of the crop in 1994. Finding a Daytona USA machine for the first time felt like you were playing something from the future. It looked so much better than what you were accustomed to. When it was clear the Model 2 was a sound investment, Sega brought all hands on deck to create as much software as they could for it. Sega's other amusement divisions began work with it and before you knew it, there was Model 2 goodness as far as the eye could see. Among this deluge of fighting, racing, and shooting nirvana, there was a motorcycle game based on the Isle of Man TT races released in 1995. Manx TT came in a deluxe sit-down model with a large projection screen, as well as a dual sit-down unit for multiplayer. Both these could be networked for up to eight simultaneous players. The bikes were controlled by leaning them left and right to steer, as well as handlebars that had realistic throttle and brake levers, giving you the sensation that you were on the real thing. It was a pretty cool game and the sense of speed made it a regular for me and my friends. In 1997, Sega commissioned a Saturn version to be made by Tantalus Interactive and Perfect Entertainment, a port that would exhibit both the best and the worst of the Saturn's library. In this episode, we are going to take a look at it and see how it fared. The Isle of Man races have been around since the early 1900s, a notoriously dangerous event that has claimed many lives. Sega's game here is loosely based on that, giving you a similar taste of tight turns at breakneck speeds. The Saturn port of Minx TT does not stray far from the arcade original. Its arcade mode gives you a choice of two courses, which is in reality one large course that is broken up into two routes. The Saturn mode is a more robust option that has the two arcade courses as well as the reversed mirrored versions of them. In the Saturn mode, you can choose to simply practice the courses as much as you want, or you can take on the Challenge and Superbike modes. Challenge is where you must race all four courses consecutively, place in the top three for the first three races, and then win the final race. That gives you access to the Superbike mode where you get access to a variety of faster bikes and a much more aggressive AI competitor. This is the expert mode of the game and only for those that want to test their skills. It is significantly more difficult than the arcade mode. There is also a time trial mode you can race where you are basically testing your fastest runs. There are various ghost options available here should you want to use them. Manx TT on the Saturn also features a split screen two player head to head mode. The core gameplay of all these modes is your typical checkpoint style racing that is governed by a timer. Your job is to make each checkpoint before that timer runs out. Unlike the arcade, you get access to multiple different bikes with different stats in the Saturn mode. You do of course get both automatic and manual transmission options, as well as multiple controller types supported. You can use the original Saturn racing wheel, a 3D analog pad, and the standard controller. Finally, Minx TT can be played from two perspectives, a first-person mode and a third-person view that follows the bike. As you'd expect, the visuals of Manx TT are downgraded from the Model 2 original. The textures aren't as nice, the draw distance is closer, and it runs at half the original frame rate. There are also some heavy cutbacks on the polygon models for both the bikes and the riders. Once we get past that, Manx TT on the Saturn is not a bad looking racing game at all. It stays in line with what you've seen in past games like Sega Rally, or what is essentially a decent representation of the arcade original. 
Overall, the developers did a very admirable job here, which honestly doesn't come as too much of a surprise, because they also handled the Saturn port of Wipeout, which I personally feel was more than adequate considering it was their first time with the hardware. Fortunately, Minx TT doesn't have any of the combat effects that Wipeout required, which likely helps it run as well as it does. Running this sucker beside the arcade original gives you the impression that the development team really cared about how this turned out. There was no way they were going to get it looking and running exactly the same as the arcade, but the end result is still a nice compromise. The only real complaint I have is that it lacks meaningful set pieces that gives the tracks real personality. Sega was really good at this, from the Sonic Rock face in Daytona USA to something as simple as the Ferris wheel in Virtual Racing. That isn't this port's fault, however. It follows the arcade, and the arcade was based on the real event. The visuals are what they are, and they ain't half bad. Passing the checkpoint! The sound effects in Minx TT are quite iconic if you enjoyed the arcade. It's the type of game that just hearing it, you could instantly tell what it was. This stuff isn't quite as memorable as say the Daytona or Sega Rally soundtrack, but it's still pretty epic and fits the racing action perfectly. Let's have a listen and see if you agree. I imported Minx TT from Japan about four months before the US release, and as an early adopter I was initially thrilled with the conversion here. Nearly everything looks and runs as well as any reasonable expectation, not to mention the gameplay was easy to get into. That gameplay approximated the arcade quite well and felt really nice with the analog solutions. Oh, you could play it just fine with a standard controller, but it was another beast entirely with the Saturn wheel or the analog pad. This was mostly because the steering has a very aggressive acceleration to it when you go into the turns using the digital directional pad. The harder you steer into a turn, the faster the grip ramps up which usually causes you to oversteer right into the wall quite frequently. This was less of an issue with the analog controllers because you could hold the turn longer without leaning so hard into it. The bottom line here is that either way the gameplay is quite satisfying and just as fast as the arcade original. But the more you play Minx TT the more it becomes apparent that its lack of content really dulls the long term appeal. Put simply Minx TT is really only one track and that fact is its largest issue. It lacks content, there's just no way around it. That single track may have two routes and two reverse mirrors of those routes, but you still get tired of such a small amount of scenery. This was released in 1997. It was no longer the beginning of the 32-bit generation, when a bare-bones arcade port could get away with this sort of thing. Console racers were expanding into simulation territory, with tons of cars and tracks. And by the time this hit the West, Rally Cross was out on the PlayStation, and everyone knew the much-anticipated Gran Turismo was mere months away. Gamers were expecting more of their racing games by this time, and Sega did the bare minimum here. As an arcade release, Minx TT was a white-knuckle thrill ride with a great cabinet that made it feel special. On Saturn, however, it was a full-priced game that you could exhaust in mere hours. Unlike Minx TT's four-wheel counterparts, the core gameplay here also lacked the exciting power sliding mechanics and challenging AI that could hold your interest longer. Minx TT's AI is of the rubber banding variety and can blow past you in the final stretch all too easy, punishing you even though you never made any major mistakes. I have raced nearly flawless laps and still lost at the finish line with the timer running out. I was also not a fan of the first-person bike view. While it was likely meant to be more realistic, 
I found it thoroughly unplayable with the way the screen sways wildly in the sharper turns. That leaves a single view to play in at a time when 3D racers were known for such variety. On the plus side, it does have some nice extras in regards to unlockable superbikes and the Daytona-inspired sheep racing. Flying around the track strapped to the back of one of these animals is definitely worth a few laps. This of course is the line that will most likely divide those that enjoy Minx TT and those that do not. If the gameplay is what you're after because you love the arcade original, this will do you just fine. If you're searching for something that provides a satisfying amount of content on a console that doesn't have many racers they do, well, prepare to be sorely disappointed. Time is up and you didn't finish. Much of the gaming media at Manx TT's release were almost patronizing with their reviews. Nobody rated it poorly, but there was plenty of critique regardless. It was like a stepchild being patted on the head and told they were okay, but never praised at the level of their other siblings. I think much of that is due to the lack of content and having contemporaries that were much more popular. When someone reviewed it as a straight representation of the arcade, it was mostly a positive take that focused on its outstanding attributes. Manx TT in the arcade was fun and had its fans. Those looking for short bouts of speed-induced adrenaline in this home conversion should enjoy the Saturn take on the subject. If you are looking for anything more than that, this is most likely going to let you down in a pretty big way. This is almost like a demo to what should have been a much larger and more robust home conversion. Even being based on the professional race that it is, Sega could have easily had the developers add a few more fictional tracks to give the game some more value for that $50. I confess I still have enough nostalgia for this to enjoy it in short bouts, but that's almost out of necessity because it has so little to offer in the long term. That was its Achilles heel way back then, and it's still that way all these years later. I'm Sega Lord X. Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.